silly, silly technology. I don't yeah. always understand it, but it's working now by golly. <laughs> gee. I'm just waiting to make sure it comes up. Uh, it looks like it is. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Hey, friends, welcome to Sunday morning with my audio playing in the background, which is the first thing that I tell people not to do. <laughs> I broke my own rules. Good grief. Hey, friends, happy Sunday. It is not Friday, but it is the weekend, which means it is time to do some sewing. And we're going to keep this to just an hour. So we're just going to work on this for an hour, see how much we can get done. And then I'm going to move on to some other projects. And I think Sean has some lovely plans for this afternoon, too. In case you don't know who this gentleman sitting to this side of me is, this is Sean from The Guy Who Sews. He has a YouTube channel, and you can find it by typing exclamation Sean in the chat, in the live chat, and it'll pop up his channel. And I want to talk to you for just two seconds about what it is we're doing here. We're going to make faces at each other. Uh, but really more importantly, we're going to make panda faces. At least that's what I'm doing. You see, back in the spring, Sean had challenged me to take on Elizabeth Hartman pattern, and I thought he was out of his mind, but I'm always up for a good challenge. And so I said, sure, why not? We selected the pandas and sweaters pattern, and we've each been working through this. He's just going to make the normal nine or eight or some number of normal blocks, but a challenge would not be a challenge if I didn't have something to make me fail or try to fail me. <laughs> and so I'm doing 20 of them, but we're attacking this a little differently. He's working on a panda block at a time, and I'm just working on whatever step it is for the panda, and I'm making 20 of those. So where you last saw this challenge, I was making 20 sets of panda eyes. And as you can see, those are all done. But the problem is, if I'm not in front of a camera working on this, I'm not working on it. It's just sitting in the corner. And so I thought it would be a great way to hold me accountable by making Sean sew this with me. And so today I'm going to be working on the nose units so that I can put the eyes on top of the nose. So that was a whole lot of information for me. But now you know what we're doing. Good morning, Sean. Are you ready to work on some pandas? Yes, ma'am. And I think it's um, my challenge now is to catch up to you because um, I haven't started on my eye units for these two, but I did do um, two of them already. So you can kind of get an idea of what they look like. And mm. so that's the first one. So I love pretty. this one. I love this one here because it's kind of like a, it almost looks like knitted material. So like it's the panda and sweaters. This is just about perfect. And then this lovely pink one as well. And I'm trying to use everything from stash as well. That seems to be a recurring theme over in my little world. Um, figure why not let it continue on. So um, I will start off with the eye units and try and catch up to those with um, Becca. I'm only doing two this this morning, so I think I've got a better chance of um, catching up. So maybe I'll overtake her. I'm making noses. The noses look like they might be easy, but we'll we'll see. <laughs> they're not they're not super difficult. Um, it, you know I'm. If you've done any stitch and flip, I think you can do it quite successfully. Her patterns always look very intimidating. Like you open up the pattern and, you know, it'll say page one of 27 or one of 47. Or if you get the um, produce one um, that I got earlier this week, it's 57 pages long. I mean, yeah, that that's kind of what I said to when I opened the PDF. But it's well, very, well, very well written. So I think, you know, it's not as difficult as it is. One step at a time, you'll do just fine. Yeah, you know, I'm actually not not upset with this with with this pattern, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm kind of enjoying my time. So I'm just gonna get started sewing because I only have an hour before I need to sit down and record some videos and do some other things. And I think we're on a time limit for you too. So let's mm -hmm. just get to work. Here's yep. what I have done, and by I I mean Mary. <laughs> When I mentioned I was going to do this, Mary, this this quilt is going to go to my friend Mary. She loves pandas, all the things. And it's actually kind of cool. We'll talk about this in a minute, about the timing of it. Sean, you mentioned that before. But she cut everything and labeled everything. So all of my pieces are already cut enough for all 20 pandas. And they're already put in little snack baggies that I keep in a Sterilite container. And so when it's time to work on the panda, I just have to open up the pattern and I flip because it's a book. It's not just like two pieces of paper, which I love. But I just flip to the section that I'm going to work on, which in this case is the nose unit. It's on page 13. And I just follow the diagram from this. 
I pull my sandwich baggies of fabrics out and I just get to work. That way I'm not, I don't have a whole bunch of other things here that I don't need. So it looks like the first thing that I'm gonna need to do for my nose unit is grab my fabric B and my fabric keys. And this is that stitch and flip you were talking about. And then we're just gonna add kind of like that white border around it. You've already done some of these, right? Because you've made a yes. finished paper. You've already built out the units for each one. Right. Sure. Yeah, and they come in quite handy. And um, if you're doing any amount of stitch and flip, I highly, highly recommend this, um, what's it called? Folded corner clipper. Yeah, I actually have one of those. Hold on. Yeah. Oh. Like Hold I've on. done, I've done quite well without them. I mean, I've made a bunch of Art East and Elizabeth Hartman without them, but it's so much easier because you kind of just um, line it up you cut and then you just sew a quarter inch away and it's all done. There's no dog ears, no nothing. You just, it's, you're doing all the hard work up front. So it makes it nice and easy. All right, yeah, you're going to walk, you're gonna have to walk me through how to use that. So I'll do some stitch and flips and then maybe we can use my close up camera here to walk through how I would use that. Okay, cool. Yep, that's easy enough. So um, I did want to say to um, all, all of my Canadian friends here watching, um, happy Thanksgiving. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving in Canada. Um, for those in the US, it's a little weird because Thanksgiving in the US is on a Thursday, in November. In Canada, it's always on a Monday. So they get a long weekend as well, but usually not as long as most of us here in the US. But um, I'm not quite sure why it was um, start on a Monday, but maybe someone can tell me in the, in the chat because they know more than I do. Yeah. So I'm curious to know for um for Canadian Thanksgiving, do they eat turkey? <laughs> I, I think so, because I mean I work with a lot of Canadian customers um for my day job. And I mm -hmm. think that their thanks like their meal that they have is usually fairly similar to us. It's just that they um do it a little before what we do here in the US. And I'm almost certain, and I could be wrong on this, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Canada and the U.S. are really the only two countries that celebrate, like, a Thanksgiving. Um, it's not something we do in Australia. It's not something that I'm aware of in Europe or anything else like that. So it's always special for our exchange students when they come over here and get to experience an American Thanksgiving as well. Remind me, Sean, when did you move here from Australia? Uh, end of 2001. Right. So you did not have the pleasure of going to elementary school here and celebrating Thanksgiving, right? No. Yeah, yeah. Has Amanda talked to you about what that was like for her? Uh, not, not, not in that sense, no. So uh, when you were talking about Thanksgiving and the celebration and everything, I, I'm curious to know if Amanda, because I think we're close in age, but I, I'm curious if Amanda has the same experience that I did in elementary school, the week before Thanksgiving, we would have a Thanksgiving potluck and we would all sit on the floor in our classroom and they would take like a big long piece of white paper that would be like the table runner and you would decorate it with markers and stuff. And you would make like construction paper hats for whether you were a Native American or if you were a pilgrim, you wore something else. And basically you would have like a classroom potluck. Oh, that's cool. Anybody cool. else ever had, like, that was me. So, hey, Steven's here. He said he's got all the history for us. <laughs> oh, he's, yeah, he's the, yeah, he's the historian here. If you ever want to know anything about Canadian history, just grab Steven, bring him in, and he'll tell you everything. Like, he, he's really, really good about good. that. He I'll did that for me for Canada Day. I had him on um, my live on Canada Day, and he gave us a full rundown of um yeah, the history and everything else. He does a wonderful job of that. I think he was an English or a history teacher um, as his day job before he retired. So he kind of just draws back on that, if I remember I've seen, correctly. I've seen a couple of his videos. I knew he was a history teacher or a teacher of some sort. I, I remember I remembered that. So I'll read what he wrote. He said, yes, we eat turkey. Okay, they're not uncivilized. <laughs> He said, from 1879 onward, Thanksgiving uh, Day has been observed every year, the date initially being a Thursday in November. After World War I, an amendment to the 
Arm, Armistice, I mean, I can't read. Armistice Day Act established that Armistice Day and Thanksgiving would, would starting in 1921, both be celebrated on the Monday of the week in which November 11 occurred. I was an English teacher, not history, but drama teacher as well. Okay, fair, but I knew teacher. I knew teacher. So correction, Sean, he wasn't a history teacher. He's just a history buff. Gotcha. Okay. That was close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could just have him <laughs> send him the Zoom link. Just have him come on and narrate everything. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, no, he did a wonderful job for me on, like, I, I knew a little bit about Canada Day, but, yeah, by the time we were finished um, with that live, I think everybody that dropped in um, learned a lot more. And if you want to learn more about Canada Day and hang out with us for a little bit, go back and check out that video as well. <laughs> That's will do. You had Amy on your channel yesterday, and I remember I she said, um, I drink coffee and no things. Should we yes. tell Stephen that, uh, let's just start saying for Stephen, he quilts and knows things. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. We can go with that. Amy drinks coffee and knows things. Stephen quilts and knows things. So what mm. do you do then? Um, I fake it until I make it. <laughs> I think I'm going to say I seem ripping those things. <laughs> oh, oh I, I see. Keep with that. Okay. Well, that's what I'm I... doing right now because this just didn't match up. So, Got it. Well, I'm, I'm sorry that you're spending time with Jack. No, well, he likes to come out and play once in a while. Him and I had good little conversation yesterday because I had to rip out like a bunch of stuff on a t-shirt quilt. The sashing just was not lining up. And as much as I didn't want to rip out two foot of sashing, I had to. Awesome. Awesome. But it's done now, so that's all that matters. We've got a couple other comments in here about Thanksgiving. Um, Pat Strawhouse, who is also in Canada, Yep. said, thanks, Sean. Our Thanksgiving was declared by our Governor General in 1957. Always the second Monday in October. It corresponds to our harvest festivals and those in the UK. All right. So the Governor General, um, I can tell you a little bit about that. Um, I'm almost certain it's the same way in Canada that is in Australia. But the Governor General is basically the representative to, of the Queen of England. Or, you know, I guess we should say King now, but I... Yeah, you know, we, we had Lizzie for so long. I still think she's kicking around the nursing home somewhere. Um, so, yeah, you, you have your parliament, you have your prime minister, but then, yeah, because Canada's part of the British Commonwealth, um, they still the Queen still needs to have a representative in each of her... Sorry, the King has to have a representative in each of the countries um, that is part of the Commonwealth, and that's what the Governor General does. Um, I believe he has the power, he or she, I don't know if it's a lady or a gentleman in Canada at the moment, I believe they have the power to kick the Prime Minister out of power if they do anything naughty. So is that kind of like an American ambassador, like the ambassadors that we have, where there's diplomats from the US that are sent overseas to represent the American government? I, no, I think it's a little different. It's more like, like I think both countries would have diplomats as well. And um, but yeah, it's more like it's basically because it's a monarchy, um, and we're because we're part of the monarchy. Monarchy, they have to have a representative for the um, for the monarch, and that's what the governor general does. But I believe they would have a separate um, like diplomatic division, just like the US does, and I'm sure. Um, okay, Jan's saying that's right, and yes, King Charles. So, um, yeah, apparently what I'm saying is true. I didn't really take much history in high school for some reason. I don't know why. So I kind of just, um, yeah, make it up as I go along. But usually I'm somewhere in the ballpark. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't remember, like, a lot of the political stuff and how all, all of that tends to work. I'm fuzzy at best with our own system. And then when you start adding in like other countries and the monarchy i'll be honest with you i don't know what the difference is in england i don't i don't understand why they have a queen or a king and parliament i don't know what the two do that are different i don't understand it i'm just ignorant on the subject <laughs> i could probably learn and maybe i should but i could also make a quilt instead so i'll do that there you go 
Um, why is this not matching up? Oh, oh, here comes Sean, or here, not Sean, Stephen. You guys both have S names. I'm getting them confused this morning. Stephen has more information. The governor general has important parliamentary responsibilities, summoning, proroguing, and dissolving parliament, setting out the government's program by reading the speech from the throne, giving royal assent, which brings parliamentary bills into law. Yeah, Very so cool. it's a little, yeah, it's a little different here because you don't have, you don't have a king or a queen. Um, it's like an additional, you know, additional level. Um, you know, like here in the US, you have the three branches of government, the whatever they are, I can't remember now, judicial, legislative, and executive. Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of like your balance, you know, checks and balances and all that sort of stuff. See, I did learn something in um college history. Um yeah, the, basically you don't have the additional stuff because you don't have the monarch. Yeah, because basically the, the monarch is the you know overall ruler, basically. So right. there you go. But yeah, I'm not going to try and um, bore everybody with um, monarchy stuff and history because um, I'm just going to look ignorant in a little bit. <laughs> so we have reached our capacity for the knowledge that we have. We're done. Let's move on to something that we know a little bit more about. How's that quilt block coming? <laughs> Sorry, how's your quilt block coming? What are you? What I'm are good. Your... I've oh, I no. think the one piece was a little too long, so I trimmed it, and it may come back to haunt me later. But we will see what happens. I have I had that problem yesterday, except mine was a little too small. So I was working on the pencil block last night on a live stream with Donna for the zoology block, and I made the little lead point. And even though I followed the FPP template somehow that little point that goes on the tip of the pencil was not as wide as the pencil by like i want to say like half an inch so mm -hmm. yeah that was that was fun Ooh, elite alice says elizabeth Parkman is coming out with a cats and pajamas pattern oh okay well i'll have to add that to my list yeah i mean i should just give her my credit card details and say just send me one of everything um same thing with my buddies up at art east i mean everything they produce is something i want to make too and i'm don't know when but i'm sure they'll be coming up there they normally do like a couple of patterns in the fall and some in the spring so i'm sure i'll get a notification soon about the spring pad not the spring patterns the fall patterns he's he's awesome it's john right yeah john and then he's um john and matt but i think john does most of the designing i think matt does more of the um business side of it that's correct. But yeah, they're both lovely gentlemen. I think very highly of both of them. And yeah, I just love all their patterns. I just need more time of the day so I can make more of them. So for the, there's a sew along that they're doing right now. Are, and you're doing that too, right? Yes. Okay. You want to talk about what that sew along is? Okay. So it's themed on Alice in Wonderland. It's a nine month project and each month, well, you sign up for the whole thing up front, and then you can either get the PDF downloads that you they're available on a they have like he has like a his own web portal, and you can go on and you know download it there, or you can get the little booklets which he has sent to me. Mm -hmm. And this is block one, which is Alice, and this time around they're using old Tula pink fabrics. I love that. Yeah, so I don't have the Alice block within reach. Um, but you can go back and check that out on, I think it was like two episodes ago. You can see that, and I'll have a time lapse for that coming out this week. Um, he he gave me permission to um, actually film it all coming together as well. I reached out to him up front just to make sure there was no copyright issues with that, and he was very gracious and said, yeah, sure, go for it. Just don't give away the um, cutting instructions. Mm -hmm. um, so each month I plan on doing that, so that way you can kind of see how it comes together in like three or four minutes so that's awesome that's awesome that's been kind of my go-to a lot of times if i'm going to work on a pattern on the channel i just won't give the cutting instructions and i've even it's it serves two purposes so this mat it actually does have measurements on the back side of it but okay. i flipped it around so that there's no markings on it because I realized I don't really use the markings on my mat. If I need to use my mat to measure, 
I'll go over to my cutting table and I'll do it over there. Most of the time I use my ruler, um, but it makes the, it makes it look really cool. I don't know why I'm talking about the markings on my mat. I think I was going to say something along the lines of if I'm not using the mat to square things up, it does make it a little bit harder for you to guess what size the pieces are, but I don't think that matters. I just don't blatantly say what the sizes are. Yeah. I won't get cutting instructions because honestly, that's half of the reason why you buy a pattern. I know how to make half square triangle unit. I know how to sew things together, but why I buy the patterns for the fabric requirements and the cutting instructions. Right. And then, you know, a lot of people making patterns do it as, you know, as part of all their livelihood. So exactly. You know, you it's yeah. If I, I if I want to, if I want to make it, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll pay for it and do it happily. Yep. Absolutely. Right. Okay. So you walk into a quilt shop and you've got some money to spend. What do you go to? Do you go to the fabric? Do you go to the notions or do you go to the patterns first? What what are you going to more likely walk out of a quilt shop with? Fabric, notions Fab or patterns? Fabric, for sure. Um I'm not a big I'm not a big notions guy. Um I'm very selective on what I buy. I, I don't get a lot. I don't really feel like I need a lot of notions. Mm -hmm. Um and then patterns, I both buy most of those online because I'm drawn to those patterns mostly that like the Art East and Elizabeth Hartman. If they were the only two quilting websites left on earth um, one day, I'd be happy as a clam because it's where I do most of my my work. So, yeah, I don't know that I've bought. I've bought a couple of patterns at quilt shops, but usually yeah, I'm going to come out with fabric. Lots of people are saying fabric. Candace said fabric, then patterns. I'll tell you, like, I, I want to say fabric, but I also love a good pattern. And I realize that I end up just collecting the patterns because a lot of times I can always buy the fabric later, right? If there's a project yeah. I want to do, I'll buy a pattern and I'll hold on to it. But then I forget I have the pattern and it becomes a whole thing. But I also really love gadgets. So I like to see what's on the notions wall. Um, my... <laughs> I don't want to buy the same notion over and over again, obviously, but I like to see what, what the industry is coming up with, what new sewing or quilting aids are out there that could make the process easier. So uh, Joy's asking, what is the size of your ironing board? I would like to make one, please. Um, I think it's like nine inches by 13. It's like the size of a casserole dish. If I actually want to make one a little bit bigger than that. I think 12 by 18 would be a good size. All right, Bill says he likes Kona solids, so he's definitely in my in my campground with me, so that's that's awesome. Yes, he Yeah. Does thread count as a notion? Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> I mean, it's on the notion wall at my quilt shop, so <laughs> Yeah, we don't like the quilt shop that I go to mostly doesn't really have a whole ton of like notions that's like outside of your normal like rulers and that sort of thing there. So I think it depends too a lot on what your local quilt shop stocks. Like if they have more fabric than notions and patterns, um, yeah, that's going to influence your answer because yeah, I don't think they have a lot of patterns for sale. I mean, they have some, but yeah, usually we, you know, I think me and a lot of other people go on there to buy fabric. So I guess it's what they focus on. Mm -hmm. Dragonflies for Donna says, Fat Quarter Shop has a The Bunny Bunch pattern and Cats and PJs is set to notify me when it's in stock. So you can get on the wait list for the next Elizabeth Hartman pattern. Oh, okay. I usually just buy her PDFs. You know, that's smart. I've been relying a lot more on my iPad for all sorts of things, taking notes, um, mocking, like all sorts of things. And I want to get to the point where I'm using my iPad to read and flip through patterns. I do like stationary. So that's a bit of a transition for me because I like the way paper and pen feel. But the PDF never goes away. Right. You don't have to worry about killing any trees. It's always there. And you can make notes on it just just as easily as you cut on the paper copy, but you're not ruining the paper when you do that. Like if I make a note on this with ink, the note's there forever. I don't, that doesn't necessarily have to be true on the PDF. 
Yeah, and I always seem to misplace my paper patterns. So I go to sew something and then all of a sudden it's disappeared and then I have to spend 10 minutes looking for it. So like I'm I'm a bigger fan of PDS too. Plus with how my sewing room's set up, I have a computer right here in front of me because I also work here from home, um, you know, some days a week. So I have the advantage of being able to just look it up and I follow the pattern along. And if I want to blow, you know, make it a little bit bigger so I can see what they're talking about. Um, a little easier, I can do that as well. So, but That's really awesome. at the end of the day, you do you, like whatever works best for you and your your your, your space. Oh, there it is. I, thought, I was like, oh no, I'm missing one of my little squares of P and it was still in the baggie. Oh, okay. That's fun. I'm working on my P, um, little P sections as well, but for the okay. eyes. Amy says, gifty things. Give me a blank notebook. Ooh. <laughs> I, you know, my husband <laughs> chokes with me. Jason tells me I like to collect blank journals because <laughs> I'll buy a journal and I'll put it on the shelf and I'm so excited to use it, but I never do. So I literally have a shelf of blank journals and notebooks that I, um, it's like fabric to me. I collect them and I never use it. That's a problem. All right. Jen says here that I prefer PDFs just because it takes too long to have ships ship to have things shipped to me, but I have to print it out for some reason. I don't absorb it into a screen well. And that's that's a good point too. Like um I like yeah, you know, not having to wait for something to show up. And then I'll I'll print certain pages of mine, but especially like the cutting instructions, a lot of times I will cut out, I mean I will print out the cutting instructions because that way I can go ahead and just check, check off as I'm doing it. Yeah, you know, the, and that also resonates with me a little bit too. Sometimes if I have documentation that I need to review, I do have a hard time comprehending it, like fully understanding when it's just electronic. Yeah. All right, Sean, I have all of my noses snowballed, all 20 of them. Oh, and nice. I have not flipped. I have not flipped anything. I've not cut anything. So let's talk about this folded corner clipper thingamabob. Walk okay. me through how I would use this. All right, just give me one second and I will show you an example. Uh -huh. And while you do that, I will have some more of my coffee. All right, yeah, my, I finished mine off while we're still playing without tech issues. So, all right. Okay. So let me just press this and I can show you a real time example. Okay, so. I've got my little eye section right here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to get um, the next piece. Bear with me a moment. I didn't realize I'm going to be teaching today. And it's going to go, and I've got to show it the right way too. So you put your piece of fabric here because you got to sew on a diagonal from this corner down to this corner. Right. And so you can eyeball it. And that's what I've done for years. But okay. I was I was looking at this ruler. Um, Kendall Taylor was showing it on his channel a few weeks ago, and I was like, "This this thing looks really neat." So what you do is you lay your ruler. It's gonna be really not gonna be super easy for me to do, right here. But basically, you want the diagonal, this printed black line, the diagonal, to go from the top corner down to the bottom corner, and then you'll have your quarter inch seam allowance already, and then you just basically cut here. And then it'll be you sew and you got your quarter inch and it's all done. Oh, so it's opposite of what I should have done. I've sewn everything. I should have trimmed first. You can do it either way. But the idea of this is you trim first and you sew and then you're done. You just press and move on. But how is this template better than just a one and a half by six and a half inch ruler with a quarter inch line on it? Because if I take that quarter inch mark and line it up on the stitch, I just did the same thing. I think it's probably the same sort of thing, but it's it's in a triangle. Um, I don't know. I, I I like the ruler, so maybe this is meant for like. Oh, it comes know. with a little booklet too. Here we go. Let's let's look at the little booklet it comes with. Yeah, because I don't uh, have that booklet anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'll send you a picture of it. I mean, it's not. You can go online and look at this. See, so I'm not giving away any trade secrets, but this is <laughs> this is basically. Um, it's, and it's also, you can do it for binding as well. 
Mm, mm. I haven't tried that. Let's see if I can figure it out. Yeah. Um, but if you go onto their website or, you know, scan this QR code, um, you can see all the different things. As I said, it's it's everyone's different. Um, what, you're, what you're suggesting will probably work just as well. Um, but I like the fact that it's a little triangle and yeah, it's it's made my life a lot easier. So got it. I sewed and then cut, but it sounds like perhaps you cut then sew with that. Well, I used to cut, I mean sew and then cut too before I got this. And then now I've just change it. I just like the fact that once I sew it, I'm done and I can move on to the next piece. All right, Jeannie says, yes, Becca, you cut before you sew. Yeah, so it's just, it's an option. Hey, nothing wrong with that. There's always yeah. more than one way to skin a cat, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I always just eyeball it, and I was usually fairly close. But I do it so much. But this is, yeah, I found this is more precise, which is nice. All right. Dragonflies with Donna says, I use that rule for many things in both ways you described. Okay, awesome. All right. Uh, Laura says, doesn't it allow you to line up the two sides of the triangle on a particular line or measurement? That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking with it because it's got those markings on it. But I think the pieces that I'm working with are just a little too small, but maybe, maybe there's another way. Oh, 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 Sean. Okay, uh -huh. hold on. Hold on. Let me give you the good overhead view. I, I, I think I found something. Hold on. Okay. Spotlight for everyone. Let me zoom you in. And we're going to change the camera angle to this. So. Okay. Okay. So I've got right here. One of my units. So rather than just like putting the black line on the sewing, the stitching or going from corner to corner, I'm actually going to slide it down so that the measurements is on the square. So I know these are one right. and a half inch squares. So I'm gonna put that, or one inch square, sorry. So I'm gonna put that one inch square right on here. And mm -hmm. so I'm looking for this line to be on the side, this line to be on the bottom and this diagonal line to be on my stitching. And then you trim. And yeah, I, I, I obviously it's not going to do me any good. Now I could do the same thing with just this because I've already sewn everything together. The power in this, like I've seen in the chat, is people are saying you cut first and use this to trim everything up first and then you stitch. So yeah. that must be what they were talking about. Yes. And I said, I'm not the best per person to explain stuff sometimes. So, um, yeah, that, that's great. Yeah, I, I remember seeing that on the, the paperwork, but yeah, it's just been working nicely for me and I just really enjoyed the ruler. So, somebody, one of my subscribers sent that to me a couple of years ago. An Amazon package showed up at my PO box. And I was like, okay, I can't remember who sent it to me, but I haven't really figured out how to use it. I am appreciative that I have it though, because I know there's a use for it. So, it sits in my little rack of rulers and templates and i figured one day i would figure it out and now i guess i did yeah i'm yeah, gonna try yeah i watched kendall use it and i was like this looks really neat so that's kind of what inspired me to buy it so yeah i think it's like 18 or 19 dollars it's not cheap but for the amount of stitch and flip i do it's well worth the money yes um, and the smaller your pieces are, the more finicky those stitch and flips can be, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it was right before I got ready to start the Alice in Wonderland thing. And I was like, yeah, he's probably going to have a lot of small pieces in this. And yeah, if you're not doing a lot of it, it might not be worth it. But yeah, if you're doing a lot of this sort of stuff, I think it's well worth the investment. Yeah. Hello, Fallon. Oh, good morning, Fallon. Good to see you. Have you seen the rulers that she has, those trim locks and the the other things? Have you seen those yet? Yes, I have seen them. Um, I have not got the trim locks yet. Um, it's on my list to get sometime in the future. I do have the 
long rulers, the 24 inch one. How do you like that? Oh, I love that thing. That's all I use for cutting um, yardage. Absolutely love that thing. Mary bought one from her and she's brought it here so I can use it. So I don't have to buy a 24 inch one because I can use Mary's. I don't cut much yardage. I'll be honest with you. If I've got bolts where it's the full, like just folded once, if I've got bolts, I usually just rip. Oh, okay. See, I'm cutting strips like for this. Um, uh, like right, off the two, right off the bolt or whatever it is. Yeah, I just cut the the strips off that and I love that ruler because it doesn't go anywhere like it's it stays put yep now I could see like the 14 inch one being more useful for me because everybody's sewing room is different everybody's right. process is different so my yardage is folded on those comic book boards which is about 12 inches high 11 inches high so that 14 inch one I probably would use a whole lot of right yeah, and that, that's like you make a very good point there. Like, what works for me isn't necessarily going to work for you. Like, I have it's floating around here somewhere. This one's like 12 and a half by six and a half, and it's got the non slip stuff on the back. So, I'm doing something smaller, I'll use this. But yeah, if I'm cutting like um, strips from a bolt or, you know, yardage and that sort of thing there, I, I pull out the balance drill and use that. It's just, it's been working so well for me. So, Good, good, good. All right. My noses are all snowballed and cold because they're snowballed. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and now we're going to starch them. And this is where that acorn easy pen comes in, which has been probably, it's probably not needed for a lot of this stuff. But if I'm being completely honest with you, it has become a muscle memory thing. And I kind, it's, it's a soothing thing to do. I don't know why I like this stupid thing. <laughs> but I do, and I'm using it. I have an acorn pen. I've never used it. See, I had one for years, and I never used it. Years. I had it for years. And I only started using it because of FPP. You mm, want to okay. be able to apply the starch to... Sometimes you want to be able to starch a seam if it's particularly thick, because if you add this, I'm sorry, yeah, starch a seam. If I can add a bit of best press to the fabric, I can get that seam to lay a little bit flatter. So I started doing that with my FPP blocks and I was noticing better results as a result, but I was in the throes of working with Ursula at the time. And right. then I was starting up the Vortex from Legit Kits. And it just kind of became a muscle memory thing to use this every time I starch. But then I've heard other people talking about how this is a good idea when you can't starch the fabric. So if you're like doing the puzzle mystery quilts where you can't starch the fabric, you can put this on just the seam in your block and it adds enough enough body to the seam that it makes the fabric not so flimsy. I was like, okay, let me try it. And I did, and they're not wrong. Yeah, I've seen you use that quite a bit recently. I think it's a neat idea. I just haven't done it yet. And have I goofed this up yet again? Oh, no. Are you going to have to get Jack out again? No, I'm going to have to redo this section. Um, oh, that's even worse. That's okay. These things happen. This is why I shouldn't be doing these complicated patterns on a live. One of these days I'm going to learn. <laughs> That's okay, though, because I, I got basically what, what I did is I made two right eyes instead of one right and one left. But, you know, I still have six pandas to make. So we'll just put him to the side and make another one later. So I think what I'll do now is just move on to the nose. Not the end of the world. Yep. Pat Strahow says she likes her acorn pen. She ran out of solution in the middle of a project, and her solution was just to fill the pen with some best press. I've heard lots of people say the same thing, and if and when, it'll be if, not when. I run out of liquid. I want to give that a shot, too. I think that would work just as well. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, if it does the same basic job, I can't see why it would make much difference, so... 
Dragonflies for Donna is asking a question. Have you or Sean ever used wovens or flannels in quilts? And have you ever mixed fabrics into a single quilt? I'll let you answer that first. Occasionally. I've done it with like scrappy quilts. Um, I think there's actually a couple of times I've used it. And you can feel it's like a different thickness, but it actually sews together reasonably well, at least in my in my experience. I don't do it often, but yeah, there's a yeah, mostly for I would say probably only for a scrappy project is what I've what I've done. Hmm. What about yourself? Um, no, I've actually not really worked with wovens. I do have some in my stash. I would like to. And as for flannel, I'll be honest, I don't like the way flannel feels. Okay. So I, I tend to stay away from that. Uh, my mom, however, does love a good flannel and has worked with flannels in a quilt. Have we ever combined those mediums? Not in a quilt top, but I have put minky on the back of quilts. But mm -hmm. I've not done anything fun like combining different mediums. Yeah, I think the time I've done most like combining of mediums um, would be t-shirt quilts because I've done some where, you know, I've done both um, like regular cotton t-shirts and then technical tees, sometimes polo shirts. Yeah, I mean, whatever people throw up. I mean, one I've got right now has a baseball jersey in the middle of it. So, um, yeah, I mean, you can do, I mean, I, it's except, yeah, as long as you, you know, Take your time with it. I think it's quite doable. Mm -hmm. I like this uh, sewing with friends thing that I've got going here. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's this, neat. It is neat. I did this last night with Donna for a couple hours. I think maybe keeping it to an hour, maybe an hour and a half is probably a little bit more palatable. But just yeah. finding a time every every so often, maybe like once a month where I pick a, or every couple of weeks maybe, where I pick a time frame on a weekend where I grab a friend and I just sit and sew and chat with them is great. It's not the Friday night thing. We can keep Friday night for what Friday night is just me working on my own stuff, but this is a lot of fun. And I, th I think I want to do more of these and I'm eyeballing Amy in the chat. And I know she's done some big stitch quilting. She was talking about that, right? Yeah. Um, that was her, right? I'm not wrong. I Think I, think so, was, but I, I think it was on your channel that she was talking about that. Might be. I, I can't keep up with the chat on mine, let alone yours. So. <laughs> well, we'll have to see because if, if if it was her, whoever it was, we'll have to see if we can coordinate a, a sewing with friends live stream where maybe we just work on some big stitch quilting because I think that would be a lot of fun. Sure. Yeah. I, I love sewing with friends. I mean, that's kind of what I do on a Saturday morning. You know, I, I find yep. a I find a content creator or a friend and say, hey, come on, hang out with me for a while. And it's it's very much like, you know, I get the same sort of vibes as, you know, I am right here. I, I like it. So, yeah, I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. And you'll, I don't think you're going to have a hard time finding a um, very long list of people willing to come on and hang out with you. <laughs> well, I'm sure you will be at the top of that list because you're going to have to hold me accountable to getting these pandas done, Sean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll probably need the same motivation. So it's probably going to work out well for both of us. <laughs> Absolutely. So speaking of like the sewing with friends or hanging out with friends thing, I'm just curious. Like I know, man, some of these are crooked and we're not going to worry about it. That just means our nose is going to be imperfect, but no panda nose should be geometrically perfect. Just like you... no human nose is the same. Um. <clears throat> Let me see. So I was going to ask you a question. Your lovely wife, Amanda, is a YouTuber herself. Correct. And she's a lovely neater, neater. I meant knitter. She knits. She does beautiful things with yarn. Mm -hmm. And I know she uploads, and we'll put her channel in the show notes down below if anybody wants to check it out. And if there's a moderator, um, what maybe, Sean, you could you could drop that link in there if you're available. Yeah, I'll, I, show notes. I can do it real quick. Hang on. Dog, Dog Mom Knit, name of her yep. channel. For those of you that are curious, Sean's going to drop her link. But the question that I have for you, Sean, is when are you going to have Amanda on as a guest on your channel during a Brecky with Sean? 
She's not super keen on the idea. Um, Saturday morning is her time to sleep in. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And it, it's 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 funny because, like, here in the quilting YouTube community, we love lives. The viewers love lives. The content creators love lives. The knitting community is totally different. They have very, very few lives. And it's more that they 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 focus more on an individual podcast. Because like your podcast, when you do yours, like your weekly vlog, what is it, like 15, 20 minutes usually? Mm -hmm. And mine's, you know, 10 to 11. If it's over 11, it's a very long one. Um, but yeah, over there, it's, you know, 40, 45 minutes, an hour, hour and a half. You know, they just do longer that. So I think their community is more geared to that. Plus, you know, I've talked to um, a few people about this over there and it's harder to show like, progress i guess on a knitting live than it would on a sewing live as well like we can get quite a bit done if we're like you can make a whole puzzle mystery quilt clue in an hour and so forth yeah. but yeah yeah if you're sitting there knitting and it's hard to um as a viewer as well and that's the other thing that's been brought up is as it like here yeah you can sew for a little bit stop type you know chat and that sort of thing there but if you're knitting if you're in a middle of a row you can't really stop the chat. So it'd be a little more difficult for a viewer unless they're just sitting there watching you and not actually sewing along with you or knitting along with you for them to participate in that. So I think that's a lot of reasons why they don't tend to do it as often as we do. Yeah. But what if there was just like a stitching circle, right? Like think about it this way. Yes, she would be working on a project, but she doesn't necessarily have to be teaching anybody anything. I'm not doing anything here with my panda block. I'm not teaching anybody anything. I'm right. just keeping fingers busy while we're having a normal conversation and we're talking about the things that we like. What if, what if that was the thing? What if you were just trimming fabric or starching fabric and she was knitting and you were just talking about fun things i don't yeah. know think well, about that we'll, yeah we'll, we'll we'll talk about that and see what happens but yeah if you haven't um did i put the, i did put the channel link in yeah if you are interested in knitting go check it out um she has she's a lot of fun the viewers that go over and um watch her channel love it um they tune in religiously i mean she tries to post every other week because that's something else that's fairly common over there is to um, do it every other week because again it takes a lot longer to knit you know two inches of a sock than it does for me to sew an entire quilt top so you have mm -hmm. that there but yeah she's she's a very very talented knitter um you've probably seen on my channel and hers if you've watched it um she's won first place in the socks two years running at the mm -hmm. virginia state fair she won best in section last year so basically best in show for knitting i mean i'm just super super proud of her for that and um yeah, she's just done really, really well. So, yeah, definitely go check it out. She'd love to have more viewers and more subscribers. Um, so if you're interested in knitting, yeah, definitely go check that out. So there you go. Okay, for this one, it's not, I, I'm not going to go back through and maybe I should. I was going to say, I'm not going to go back through and square these up, but I'm going to. The pattern doesn't tell me what this should square up to, but because I did a stitch and flip fabric, or because I did stitch and flip, I know that the size of the nose should be the size that it was when I first started. So we're just going to square these up a little bit. I'm going to grab a small square ruler from behind me. And see, I'm bad. I don't square it up unless it does. If I, I check to see if it fits. If it fits the next piece it's supposed to connect to, it's kind of like me and Legos. You know, if it connects to the next piece, then it's it's fine. You but know, I, that's, probably, that's probably true. I'm just being overly finicky with this, only because they're smaller pieces. And by the way, I did see some chat comments about thimbles. There's some conversations happening in the thimbles. Janet's asking me if I would like some from Australia. I actually do not have one from Australia, so I would love one. You can email me and we can work out um, we can work out how we can get that over here to me. And then somebody else, I think it was Susan, you're out, or maybe somebody else said that they collect thimbles and they wanted to know how should they store them. And if you haven't seen it, in my expo video, 
I actually showed you my thimble collection. I have a case that holds 50 thimbles. It's a beautiful display case. It's got a glass door on it, latches shut. My husband bought it for me as a Christmas present when we moved into this house and all of my thimbles are in that display case. Oh, very Except nice. for the one I can see decent. I was Sorry? I was just how I was just going to ask about your progress. You you're in my head. <laughs> uh, well, making decent progress on the nose because I gave up on the eyes because I have to go make two left eyes now. <laughs> okay, good. We wanted got... to show that I did something right, so. <laughs> we have got about five or 10 more minutes before you're, you're wrapping up. So you got a few yep. more minutes before you have to show us what you were able to finish. That's all right. I mean, anything's better than nothing, right? Absolutely. Some progress is better than none. And then while we're waiting for you to figure out, or while you're, while we're waiting for you to catch up, hold on. I think what you and I are doing today is going to be very, very similar. Yeah. <laughs> We're just picking noses. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Now that's. <laughs> There's the name for the video. I'll change it later. Picking noses with Sean. <laughs> yeah. You watched that thing go viral. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'll get some comments on there. I didn't see any nose picking. Where are the buggers? <laughs> Clickbait. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoy. <laughs> You're right. Here, hold on. Wait till the end. There's a great big booger right at the end. Just wait. <laughs> Watch all the way through. <laughs> oh, so fun. Right. I know. I hear that a lot. It's okay. I've learned. I've learned to be okay with myself and my not rightness. <laughs> Well, like I told him at work the other day, he said, you don't have to be crazy. He will train you. So <laughs> That's hilarious. So my friend, I have a friend uh, that bought me a little wooden sign for my shelves. And it says, you don't have to be, what does it say? You don't have to be crazy to be my, to be my friend. We, I will train you. And it, <laughs> it's so <laughs> funny from that. Anywho. I feel like I've got the giggles coming on. So what are your plans for today? What are you doing after the live stream? Um, well, we'll talk to our, we always talk to our first exchange student. Um, her name was Misha. She was from, she's from Poland and she stayed with us between for the 2019, 2020 school year. So we always talk to her. Um, usually at this time of day, we actually had her push back a little bit just because I wanted to hang out with you for a little bit. And then uh -huh. the boys are the boys are very interested in going to the Virginia Air and Space Museum. Oh, very cool. So um, we'll run them up there this afternoon. It's fairly close to here. It's actually not far from where the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Show will be next year. So, Yeah, I'm excited about going to that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, I think it'll be fun because you're taking Tiffany along with you too, correct? Yes, and probably Ian. Oh, wow. That'd be cool. I get to see all of them. Yep, yep, yep. Mary will, well, you've already met Mary, but Mary yes. may be there too, we'll see. But Tiffany for sure will be there with me, and Ian is a maybe, but looking like that might actually happen. Oh, that's awesome. It'll be fun to hang out with all of you guys there. And then um, you're planning on entering a quilt in that, correct? Yes. Uh, so I'm just typing my email address for Janet. So my... I belong to two guilds in Northern Virginia, and I know at least one of them usually tries to participate, or at, le at least last year, because I've not been in guilds for very long. But last year, they participated in the challenge for the Mid-Atlantic, and so my guild had, I think, a booth there, and they had some quilts on display from members, and I just didn't have the time to make one. So this year, I want to either have one that's on display as part of the guild's exhibit or just enter one when like on my own. So I need to look in to see what that looks like because I'm sure the registration window is coming up pretty quickly. And then I have to make sure that whatever quilt I submit is not a quilt that 
is accepted for quilt con. So I have a couple of quilts in mind that I would like to submit for consideration to quilt con. I don't know if they'll get accepted. I would be completely floored if they did. I'm not asking for them to be judged or juried because I don't think, but like I've seen the work that people do at quilt con. I'm not there. But it would be really cool to be at QuiltCon and be able to take a picture of myself in front of one of my quilts. So yeah, that's what that's what I want to do for Mid Atlantic. Like I'm not even attempting QuiltCon because I know it's not going to happen, and I don't have anything ready anyway. Even if I wanted to, there's nothing that I could really. I mean, what can I? I mean, really, I could send this one in behind me. That's about it. Like, yeah. And it's more traditional than modern anyway, so I don't know if they'd even want it. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm I'm honestly on the fence with QuiltCon. I don't even know if I want to submit there because I feel like my I've seen the work at QuiltCon and I feel like my chances of being accepted are so small that I would it's not that I would don't want to do it because I'm afraid of failure. It's that I would rather take the opportunity to display it at Mid-Atlantic, which is literally the next weekend. And I feel like if the quilt went to QuiltCon, it would not be back in time to be able to send it to Mid-Atlantic. So I I only have a few quilts that I feel like are ready to are are prepped to be able to go into a show display rotation, which I'm really excited about. I actually have a couple that I can rotate with shows now, but I have to be picky, right? Like I can't yeah. send them all to all the shows at the same time. So I think in my mind, I'm leaning more towards displaying at Mid-Atlantic than QuiltCon. Okay. Yeah, I I want to enter one. I have no expectations of, yeah winning any ribbons i mean because the level of competition at the state oh. fair yeah it's like this quilt like i saw a couple of quilts that won at the state fair and didn't get anything at this show like because you're, you're competing across the nation really there's people that send stuff in from all over the place but i'm yep. kind of like you i just want to be able to send the quilt in and then go be able to stand in front of it and have my picture in front of it and just you know have people look at it you know, like yeah. I see, yeah, you know, people watch it on the channel every week, but being able to see it in person and thousands of other people being able to see it, I think that'd be fun just to do that. So, yep, I just want to show my creation, right? And yeah. then I also want, like, I like my Ursula quilt, my legit kit quilt. So I, I want to, I want that. I want to share that. That is my, that is a pride and joy that I made. Because I pieced it by myself, I quilted it by myself, I bound it by myself, I labeled, like everything in that quilt I did by myself. And I'm super excited about that. Is it perfect? No, not at all. But I'm proud of it because I did it without hiring anybody or asking anyone for help. There you go. That's always, that's an important thing. Yep. All right. So let's see. And what do you got? All right. So here it is. I've been sewing for an hour. I have made two eyeballs. <laughs> two left, two left eyes, I guess, or two right eyes, who knows? And then two noses. Okay. That's as far as I got. So that's hey, okay. That's a, that's a lot of progress for an hour. So where yeah. have I got an hour? I have all 20 of my nose is sewn and 15 of them are squared up. The next step is going to be really easy because it's just taking these white pieces and putting them around the little nose, which now you can see it a little bit better. So um, yeah, you'll turn it into this basically. Yes, exactly. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take all of these, turn it into that. And then I'm going to take it one step further because the next step is to take the eyeballs and sew it on top. So yes. what my goal is for today is to continue this progress until I have built out basically the face unit. Yeah. And then you'll really feel like you have some progress then, which will be nice. I know. I know. So we need to do this again. I'm out okay. next week and I know things are kind of busy throughout the next a few weeks and going into the holidays, but Let's work offline and find another day where we can just set aside an hour to do okay. some 
a progress and it might be that I have made zero progress between now and that other session, mm -hmm. but I am interested in doing another one and you can host on your channel if you'd like, or I can host you over here. Either way is fine. I just would like another hour to sew with my pandas and Sean. Okay. Sounds good. We'll talk about that. So um, let's see. I'm just trying to see if there's anything in the chat. I'm trying not to take over. <laughs> no, I'm you're not totally fine, dude. Keep it going. Like, I'd rather you jump in and answer questions and talk than just to sit and awkwardly look at the camera. You've got this. Go. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's the thing. Like, I, I was just thinking about this this morning. Like, I can't remember the last time I was on someone else's channel. Usually I have all the guests over on mine. So. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. No, nope. it's it, it's it's a uh, it's a different atmosphere. When you, when you get to that point where you're comfortable, if you, you can tell when it happens. When you get to the point where you're comfortable in front of a camera and you've gotten some experience under your belt with doing live streams specifically, which is a whole different beast. Oh, for sure. Doing a recorded video because with a recorded video, you don't have to be as polished. You can do multiple takes, you can re-record it, and then you get to edit it down and make it look nice and polished and get your point across. But with a live stream, what you see is what you get. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, I remember my first live, it was absolutely horrendous. It was two minutes long. Um, the dog started barking and carrying on. I turned it, I said, sorry guys, I'm I'm out. I'll see you all later. You know, come prepared. You know, I've and I've told everybody that. Like it's it's it was horrible. I deleted it, it's no longer in existence. But yeah, you get comfortable after a while. Like I think with the podcast, I think I was probably like 35 or 40 episodes in before I felt comfortable. And the lives probably took, I don't know, six months. I mean, I'd have to go back and look and see where, because you can tell if you go back and watch your old videos, you can see and cringe um, just how bad you were at the beginning and just how you evolve over time. So. Oh gosh, same. I've, I've have, I started in 2018, 2019 timeline. So I've got a lot of videos out there because I've been uploading content every week for four or five years. Right. And, uh, I've had, to, I've gone back through and I'm like, okay, we're, I've marked all of my older videos, like from my old home and stuff. I've marked them as private for the most part. There are a few that are still out there just because I feel like now that I've got that experience under my belt and I've got a little bit more comfort in front of the camera. My videos are a little bit more polished than where they were in the beginning. And I would rather you watch this content than to watch that stuff. But I do, I do know that there's some stuff out there that I made videos for. They, they weren't performing. People weren't watching them. Like I would like to remake them. So that's the other thing that I'm looking at over the next few months is just trying to think through, okay, the content that I had that was older, that I liked the topic of now that I'm more comfortable in front of the camera and I have a different setup. What if we recycled that? What if we made new versions of it and see what happens? Yeah. I think mean, that'd be fun. Um, yeah. Someone said here, uh, Amanda Groff said something here that she says, if you're staying at QuiltCon until the final day, you can take your quilt home with you. So that's an well, option for you. It absolutely is because I I think Ian Ian and Tiffany are both driving down to QuiltCon. Well, no, Ian's driving up; he's flying into QuiltCon. But Ian and Tiffany will be with me. Yeah, and we're planning to leave on Monday. And Ian's really big on wanting to volunteer and help with the whole QuiltCon thing. And so I promised him I would volunteer my time for QuiltCon as well. And I think one of the things that he wants to do is the teardown. He really likes like putting the mm. gloves on being able to get up and close and personal to those quilts okay that sounds fun so i'll just tell them like go grab my quilt and snag it and run yeah <laughs> that's really neat yeah because i mean like with my state fair stuff i you know we you up three or four days later after the fair's done so like i went up wednesday and picked mine up and the fair ended sunday so let me ask you a question, Sean, before I let you go, because I know yeah. we're five minutes past. So for the state fair, for the Virginia state fair, when do you have, like, when do you register your quilt? When does that happen usually? Uh, July, August, August, something like that. I think you have to have it in like by like the third week of August, yes, um, entry. <laughs> and then you deliver it. They're open for like four days, like usually the week of, like the week before Labor Day. I usually go up like the week, the like Saturday of Labor Day weekend and we drop the quilts off and then we go take the kid um, to do something in Richmond. We make, it, okay. we make a day of it. 
Okay. So I know we've talked about this a little bit, but I'm going to tease it right now. I I think I'm just going to tell people we're already do like we've already talked about this. I love the idea of you and I competing and I use that word really loosely because it's not really a cutthroat competition, but I love the idea of us each making our own quilt, our own version of that quilt in the same category and entering it at the Virginia State Fair. I think that would be awesome. And um, then just like forward to it. I, yeah, like, I think it would be really cool, like, come up with your own quilt design, come up with your quilt idea, make your own footage, and then release a video and show the world what your quilt is at the quilt fair, and then we'll see, we'll see what the judges think, we'll see how we both fare, we'll probably get blown out of the water by somebody else, but it'd be a lot of fun to try. <laughs> hey, give it, give it that best shot, you know, that's all you can do. Yep, yep, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to that, so I've got to, I need to start thinking a little bit more seriously about what my pattern is going to be, so if the entries are due in the summer, after the holidays, I want to start cracking on that quilt, so. Yep, sounds All right. good. All right, Sean, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It was oh, fun. I so appreciate you fun. having me on for a little while, it was a lot of fun hanging out with you as always. Absolutely. Don't forget, guys, in the chat, you can do exclamation Sean to get a link over to his channel. I'll also, I've also tagged him in the title of the video, and his channel link will be in the show notes down below in case you're watching this on the replay. Sean and I will be sewing some pandas together again in the future. Date TBD. So you want to make sure that you're subscribed to both of our channels for when that gets scheduled. Any last words before we let the audience go, Sean? I don't think so. Just, yeah, um, just have a good day. Happy sewing. And um, yeah. Check out all Becca's videos. Come see what I'm up to if you haven't already. And we'll, you know, definitely all see you soon on our respective channels. Yep. Happy Sunday, friends. I'll see you later. All right. Thank you.